Hey guys, and welcome back to part three of AI Chatbot in Python. Now, up until this point, all we've been doing is pre-processing our data, and we have a few small things we need to do before we can move on from that. But after that, what we're going to do is actually talk about the model that we're going to use to make predictions based on a string of text and how that kind of works and just talk about that and draw some things out and understand that as well as code it here. Now, the first thing we need to do, just a few minor errors here, always run into typos and stuff when I'm doing this and then I realize later, but up here where it says docs X dot append pattern, we need to change that to words. And that is because we want to append the tokenized words. So that when we do this, um, creating bag of words, it actually works. We also need to change this here to be the labels because before that was uh, classes and I don't have, I don't have a list called classes. So this needs to be labels. I don't know why I called it classes. And then last thing is for these unique words here for W and words, what we're actually going to do is we're going to say, just add an if statement at the end of this, just to remove any question marks because question marks are a pretty common thing that people could type. And we don't actually want that to have any meaning to the model. So we're just going to remove it. So to do that, we're going to say if W not in, and in this case, question mark. Now we could do not in question mark, or we just say W does not equal question mark. doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So we'll do does not equal question mark. So those are the few fixes we need to do. And now what we're going to do actually is just change our output and our training into NumPy arrays. And that's because that is the form that needs to be taken by our model. So we're just going to say training equals NumPy dot array. And in this case, we're going to say training. And then we can just copy the same thing here and we'll do output equals numpy dot array. And in this case, we will say output. Now what this is going to do is just take these arrays and change them or ch take these lists and change them into arrays so that we can feed them to our model. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is actually start building our model using TF learn. Now this is very similar to TensorFlow. So if you've done TensorFlow, you'll understand how this works, but I'm going to code the model out and then we're going to kind of draw it and visualize what it actually looks like and understand how it's going to work on classifying our data. So we're going to say uh, TF, which actually we're going to have to type TensorFlow because I didn't do import as TF. We'll do TensorFlow dot reset underscore default underscore graph. Now we're just doing this to make sure that we get rid of all like previous settings and stuff. It's resetting the underlying data graph or graph data. You don't really have to understand what that means. We're going to say net equals in this case, TF learn dot input underscore data. And in this case, we're going to sh say shape equals and then none and the length of our training zero. Now, what this is going to do is define the input shape that we're expecting for our model. So in this case, we're getting the length of training zero because each training input is going to be the same length. So by doing this, we're saying, okay, well, the model should expect us to have an array of length 45 or however many words that we have right now. Next, what we're going to do is say net equals TF learn dot fully underscore connected. It's a lot of typing, but it's we won't have to do that much. And we're going to say net eight. And what this means is we're going to say we're going to add this fully connected layer to our neural network, which starts at this input data. And we're going to have eight neurons for that hidden layer or this first. Yeah, I guess hidden layer. Now, after this, we're just going to copy this again because we're going to have another hidden layer that has eight neurons as well. And then finally, uh, we need two more layers. So we're going to do TF learned up fully connected. In this case, we're going to do net but this is going to be our output layer. So it's going to be the length of output zero. And then what we're going to say here is activation equals softmax. Now what this is going to do essentially is allow us to get probabilities for each output. And we'll talk about this more when I draw the model, but essentially softmax is going to go through and give us a probability for each neuron in this layer. And that will be our output for the network. Now, after that, we're just going to add net equals TF learn dot regression uh, regression. And we're going to apply that to network. Now to train our model, what we're going to do is going to say model equals in this case, TF learn dot DNN. We're going to say net 
and that's all we need to do. Now, this is actually our, our complete model. That's the whole AI kind of aspect of this. I know it seems really short, but let's go through exactly what I just typed and what this is. Uh, now, essentially, we just start with an input data, which is the length of our training data. Then we have two hidden layers with eight neurons fully connected, also connected to an output layer that has neurons representing each of our classes. So let me actually bring out my drawing tablet quickly and show you a little picture of this to maybe make it a bit more clear on what's going on here. So give me one second just to get this set up here and let's load up our little drawing thing. If I can get this going here. Okay. So what we have right now is we have a neural network and I'm just going to draw it out for us. So we can have a look at exactly what it is like. Now we start with a, a bunch of input neurons, which are the length of our input data, which means however many words we have, because our bag of words is going to be how many words we had in the thing. So in this case, I think we have something like 45 or something. So we're going to say we have a bunch of neurons. And in this case, let's just say we have like 45 of them. Okay. So we'll say this is like 45. Now this is our input. Okay. This is our first layer. This is our input layer. Now the next layer that we have is eight neurons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they are connected to each of our inputs. So each input connects to each neuron just like this. Now I don't want to draw all of them out, uh, but you guys get the point. It's fully connected uh, just like that. Okay. So that's all I'm going to draw for that. Now we have another layer that has eight neurons. So we draw another eight neurons. And all of these neurons are connected together, fully connected once again. So each one of these neurons connects to each other one in the layer. Again, I'm not going to draw all the lines. And then finally, we have our output layer, which has a soft max activation. And this I'll just make it green. So it's a bit different has six neurons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, again, these are fully connected. So it goes like this and all of them connect. I'm not going to draw them all out. So our output layer is special because it has this soft max activation. So essentially what this means is all of these neurons are going to be run through this soft max activation function. And what that's going to do is give a probability to each of these neurons. So let's say that this first neuron represents hello. Okay. And maybe that's the tag we have. Maybe this one represents goodbye and so on. You know, these all represent specific classes. Well, if the model thinks that our response should be the hello tag, so one of the responses under the hello tag, then this neuron will have a higher probability than all of these ones. And that's essentially the way that this works. It's going to say, well, I think that, you know, it's 70% the hello tag. So since that's the highest probability, we will take that. And well, then we will grab some kind of response from hello and spit that out to the user. So all our model is really doing is predicting which tag that we should take a response from to give to the user. So again, we have six tags are because that's how many labels we have. And we just, our model picks one of these. It actually gives us prediction values for all of them. We say whatever one is the most highly predicted. So maybe this one is like 90%. This one's like 0.1%. This one's like 5%. We take the greatest highest predicted one. We grab some responses from that. We randomly pick one and then we give that to our user. And that's kind of the way that this model works. So we take in as input, a bag of words and as output, we get some kind of class, um, or sorry, label telling us what we think we should respond with, what tag it comes from. And that is how this very basic model works. So what we are hoping is going to happen when we start training and feeding information into our model is that these hidden layers are going to kind of figure out, you know, what words represent what one of these outputs, maybe if it sees the word high, it's going to start changing some weights and changing some biases in here so that we get hello um, more commonly from that. And these hidden layers are really what is doing kind of all of the work. And they're what's going to figure out what's going on and how this works and all of that kind of stuff with more and more um, intense or tags. You would probably want to add more neurons to your hidden layers, but two hidden layers is typically enough for a problem like this. And you guys will see when we train the model, this is actually a very accurate model for this kind of classification task that we're doing because essentially all we're doing is classifying sentences of words to some kind of output um, in some kind of tag. 
So that is essentially how that works. Let's close that up now. I hope you guys have a little bit of an understanding. Again, I'm not going to really teach neural networks, but I want you guys to understand a little bit on why I chose this model and, and how it kind of works. Um, now the DNN is just a type of neural network and it's just going to take these networks in or this network that we've defined here and just use that. So now it's time to actually fit or our model. So to do this, we're going to say model.fit. And what this means is we're actually going to start passing it all of our training data. Um, so let's do this. So we're going to pass it training. We're going to pass it output. We're going to say number of underscore epochs and number of epochs is the amount of times that it's going to see the same data. So in this case, we're going to show it the same data a thousand times. And hopefully the more it sees the data, the better it gets at classifying. Now mess with this number, make it 2000, make it 5000, make it 100 and see what you get by doing that. A lot of machine learning is trial and error. So you got to understand that. Okay, so batch underscore size. We're going to set as eight and we're going to say show underscore metric equals true. And this is just so that we get a nice kind of output when we're fitting this model. Now, the last thing to do after we do this is simply save the model. So we're just going to say model dot save. And in this case, we're just going to save it as uh, I guess we'll do like model dot TF learn. And that's fine. We'll save the model and that should just work for us uh, when we start running this. If we want to use the model to make some predictions, we're going to do that in the next video, but let's just see how this works. So let me go ahead. I've already activated my environment. I'm just going to run this script and make sure that nothing went wrong here. Okay, so there we go. We're running our model. You can see it's going through all of these different epochs. And you'll notice that when it stops, we had an accuracy of 99.97%, which means it worked very well for our intents. Now, again, this is very simple because we only have six kind of tags here in our intents. If you were to add more, you would expect your accuracy would drop slightly. Um, but this model seems to be working very well, at least on the data that it's seen so far. So the next step and in the next video, we're going to start predicting data using this model. And then in the final video in the series, what we're going to do is actually set up a framework that will allow users to type to the model and get responses. Um, there's another kind of bonus part that I might do in this a sixth episode of this series, uh, but that's going to have to wait till later. So anyways, that has been it for this chatbot AI video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next tutorial.